All right, Jeremy Miner, we are going live here using the StreamYard platform. Now we're going live in four different channels. For some reason, I couldn't log into my LinkedIn today. I don't know what's going on over there with LinkedIn. I couldn't log in. Or password changed. Somebody changed the password on my team. Couldn't figure it out. So we're going to go live here, and we're going to go live, and we're going to interview. Is this pre-recorded? Hmm. So only value no BS on YouTube is asking me if this is pre-recorded. What would you would you think it's pre-recorded, or is it live? I'm going to let you guess on that one. Okay, so we're going live, or it could be pre-recorded from only value no BS. I like that YouTube name. That's interesting. All right, so we're going live, and we're going to interview. So every week on Wednesday, we interview a client in a completely different industry, and we break down their sales process. OK, and just so you guys know, to even be interviewed inside the Facebook group Sales Revolution, you have to be making at least 30 to 35,000 consistently every month, minimum to be even interviewed. OK, so we're going to interview a gentleman here that's making around 80,000 a month in commissions. Now, type in me if you want to ask this client who's now making around 80,000 every month. That's about a million dollars year in commissions. If you want to ask him questions about how you can sell more. Type in me if that's possibly you watching me right here, right? Maybe just a few of you want to ask this guy. You don't have to. I'm, I'm sure he doesn't know anything about selling. I don't know. Maybe just going out on a limb. All right. So today we're going live on StreamYard. We're going live in the Facebook group Sales Revolution. There's about 82,000 of you in that thing. That's growing fast. We're going live in the Facebook business page. Close to 160,000 of you run around in there. We're going live on the YouTube channel and my personal Facebook. Now, I'm going to bring this client out in a second, and I'm going to ask him some questions, and he has promised me that he's going to give me some really good golden nuggets that will help you sell more of your products and services if that's what you want. All right. Now, if you're brand new, if you just sort of follow me on YouTube or the Facebook group, Sales Revolution, or the business page or my Facebook, my name is Jeremy Meyer. I'm the founder of 7 Level. Now, 7 Level is a sales training organization that trains salespeople exactly like you watching me in this Hugo Boss shirt. So we train sales people like you, we train sales professionals like you, sales executives, sales leadership, sales management, business owners, entrepreneur, coaches, consultants, doesn't matter, contractors, okay? And we train you and your team specific skilled questions and techniques that work with human behavior rather than work against it. Are you 100% sure the questions you've been forced to use on your script are the right ones? Are you 100% sure that your tonality that you've been trained to use is actually causing your prospects to let their guard down? Are you 100% sure that what you've been forced to learn from the gurus in your company is not triggering sales resistance, causing most of the objections you're getting right now? So we're going to talk about that. That stands for NEPQ, Neural Emotional Persuasion Questioning, along with how to use your tone to influence your prospects to let their guard down. Because if you can't learn how to let their guard down, there is no sale. Hard to build a gap when they're closed off emotionally and staying service level. Type in me if you ever ask questions that you thought were good and the prospect gives you vague, generalized, surface level answers. Type in me if that ever happens to you. Type in me. Maybe it only happens. I guess all of you are making $80,000 a month in commissions on here. Watch. I don't know what's going on. All right. Now, I want you to type in me. So I'm about to interview a client who makes around 80,000 a month in commissions, who when he started here, you know, this is probably a year and a half ago, was doing already pretty well, making almost 20,000 a month consistently. So how did he go from making around 200, 220,000 a year to now almost a million dollars a year selling the exact same thing? Did they just give him all the good leads now? Just every easy sale, is that what it was? Or did he acquire a much more advanced sales ability to get to that level. Now, type in me in the comments if you want to start making, let's just say, worst case scenario, 10000 every month in commissions with what you sell. Now, type in me if you want to make at least 10000 every month with what you sell, like month after month. Now, for some of you, you might be like, I don't want to make 10000 a month, but I want to make fifteen. or I want to make twenty. 
So type in me if worst case scenario, you want to make 15 or 20,000 every single month with what you sell right now. Type in me. Now, some of you are bigger thinkers and you're like, hmm, I want to acquire the same skills that this client and thousands of others of our clients have acquired. And I want to start making 30 grand every month in commissions. Type in me if that's you. Or type in me if you're like, hey, I'm already at 15 or 20. What do I need to learn? What am I doing wrong? That How do I get to 40,000 a month in commissions with what I sell? How do I get to 50 or 60,000 plus a month? Or be like this guy and make 80,000 a month. Type in me if you want to acquire that level of sales ability that it takes to make that much money, right? Because your level of sales ability that you've been forced to learn has gotten you where? Where's it gotten you? To your income you're at. But how can you make double or triple or quadruple that income selling what you are if you keep selling the same way or saying the same things? How, how is that possible? So to make a much higher level of income, you have to do what? acquire a higher level of sales ability, right? Okay. Now, if you typed in me and you want to make that type of money, message me directly right now. So if you typed in me, I want to make that much money, type in me or message me directly right now. So if you're in the Facebook group or Sales Revolution or my Facebook or the Facebook business page, message me directly right now. If you're on YouTube, you'll have to join the Facebook group to message me. You can't message me on YouTube's platform. I don't check that. Okay. So you have to join the salesrevolution.pro um, uh, link there that's coming across here on a banner. Okay. To, uh, message me directly. Now, if you can't figure it out how to message me directly, just post hashtag NEPQ. Either myself or one of my stunt doubles will message you back some details about advanced training you can go through if you want to make that much money. Like our clients are who are in the same exact industry that you are right now. Okay, let's bring out this gentleman. Garrett, how are you out there? Hey, what's going on? Thanks for, hey, uh, thanks for having me. Good to see you, brother. All right, so I you know, I got to know you a little bit before this. And the cool thing is, is you know, we're training uh, your company, you know? So we train your your company now, do a lot of training. I've done a couple of keynotes with them as well. Um, Power, uh, last time I was out there, what was it? Maybe three or four months ago, we did a big uh, virtual training platform and you're like virtual studio with all the hundreds of zoom screens. Pretty cool back there. You had like thousands of your reps on there. You guys have what <laughs> nine or 10,000 reps now, or what do you guys have as a company? Yeah. Something like that. It's like, I think between like seven and 10,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, a few guys out there now, why don't you tell everybody yeah. what you sell real quick and then we're going to give them some golden nuggets. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So what's up, guys? So I, I'm I'm in the solar industry. I've uh, been in the industry for the last, uh, I guess, since 2018, which is going on six years now, which is pretty uh, pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, I st I started uh, completely door to door uh, as a setter, actually. So I was going door to door, just knocking doors, setting. Yeah. And then the last, I did that for about three years. And then the last few years, mm. I transitioned to uh, to closing. And you know, the first two years, I did over a hundred each. And then end of last year, and this is after I got into NEPQ, I transitioned to 100% remote, 100% over the phone, not Zoom, but the phone, and I'm not doing really? anything in house now. Now, tell us why you went from door to door to the phone selling the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So it was actually uh, funny enough. I uh, saw an advertisement for a lead gen company, and it was like talking about like the Google searches, and the Google searches for solar uh, is doubling every single year. It's in the millions. And I was like, oh, interesting. If okay. people are becoming interested in solar, then you know maybe door to door isn't you know something that's the most effective way anymore. Mm -hmm. In the yeah. beginning, because the you know the market adoption, the market penetration is really low. So we yeah. got to make, you know, we got to make them interested, gotta say the right things. Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, I saw, I saw it. I was like, okay, maybe yeah. there's a different way. So I met with a lead gen company uh, and uh, I started, uh, I started with them and um, essentially uh, I, I did a, I did a few in house and then I was like, okay, I'll, I did, I started with zoom actually. And uh, I, I think it was like the fir first, I think it was like the first or second zoom when I closed and I was like, wait, Dang, what what the heck? I didn't I have like, to hey. leave the house. I just did it on Zoom, right? A little <laughs> bit, yeah, a little bit different, right? Yeah, okay, yeah exactly. Yeah. So let's let's go over this. So, you know, you you get into sales as your first job. You're obviously doing something right if you're getting up to 20 grand a month in commissions. But a lot of salespeople would be like, "Man, I'm making 20 grand a month. I make so much money. I know everything there is to know about selling." 
and they just stop learning. But in your mind, why were you like, hey, I'm making 20 grand a month, but there's something I'm missing. Like I need to acquire a more advanced sales ability to get up here. Like what, what went through your mind that caused you to like even think that it was a possibility to make that type of money? Yeah. So uh, when I got to that level, I, I felt like straight up, I was plateaued. Like I felt yeah. like I hit a ceiling and I was just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. And then my friend Kyle actually showed me uh, uh, your Instagram and this was last year. And I was okay. like, and he was like, uh, this guy closed millions in alarms. And I was like, wait, what? And then that I, I, first, I that was my first job. Yeah. Yeah. From a from a lot. Yeah. From a long time ago. And then I was like, <laughs> what is this? And I watched a, I watched a few videos. I was like, dang, this, he, he's definitely knows what he's doing. So then, uh, I, I, <laughs> I booked a call from there and then, and then, uh, I was like, I got to learn as much as I can. Cause I'm a, I'm a, I'm a believer in like self, uh, improvement, you know, uh, yeah. making your skills, you know, whatever you can do to make your skills and, uh, it better and just education. I, I believe just learning as much as you can as, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as possible, because you, okay. if you think, you know, uh, if you think you know enough, you're never going to learn. You just get it, you know, stack. Here's my question though. So you sort of follow me on IG. I mean, why, why not be like a lot of salespeople? Because I run into salespeople. I literally run in four or five, six people every day at the gym, walking around town, literally going to the grocery store. I was at a restaurant last night and you know, lots of salespeople follow me. And I'm like, now are you, are you, are you following me? Or are you actually one of our clients? Oh no, I'm just following you right now. <laughs> so why not just follow me from like some reels, a couple of lives? Why, why get into like, why get into like our advanced sales training courses? Like why not just follow me and try to learn from some reels and, and wing it, hope and pray, you know, everything. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, you can get good nuggets from the stuff you have, but I just figured like, hey, if I want to get to the next level, I'm going to have to invest in myself. I'm going to have to study. I'm going to have to learn. And it's one of those things where you just, even right now, like I'm consistently studying, consistently yeah. learning. And if I stop, which I have in the yeah. past, you forget yeah. stuff, you know, you, you kind of revert back into your old ways. Yeah. And, it, and you know, it's one of those things where you just have to keep doing yeah. it, keep improving, because even yeah. if it's like a percent a day, yeah. you know, that that adds up. For sure. Yeah, because learning from a real, learning from a YouTube video, you're quite literally learning 0.000001% of what we train our clients. And you're going to have to try to figure all of it out to piece it out on your own. That took me 12 years to figure out with my background in behavioral science. So if you know, just like if there's a puzzle piece, that's like 110,546 pieces and you have like 12 of those pieces. How are you going to triple your income? I, yeah. I don't know. I, I wouldn't be able to do that myself. And I was one of the highest paid salespeople in the world in any industry. Okay. So you get into our advanced, uh, I think you, what, what you got into our advanced inner circle? What training program are you in? Was it advanced 3.0? What was it? So, uh, I, I like to take action. So I'm pretty quick. So I just yeah. like pretty much started like with everything. So I went you into like our advanced inner circle, more industry specific stuff where we're yeah. you the ins and outs plus all the portal access. Okay. So let's talk about the, the timeline. And then here's what I want everybody to do watching this. Cause between YouTube and the Facebook group here, there's a little bit over a hundred people between both of those platforms watching us right now. Um, I want, I want people here watching us to start asking you questions. OK, like, hey, how did you learn how to do this? Or uh, tell us, you know, your biggest struggle here or like, what do you do when the prospect says this? And what we're going to do is I'm interviewing him over the next 20, 25 minutes is we're going to pick the best five or six questions you guys have. And I'm going to ask Garrett and we're going to answer them for you. Would that help everybody type in me if you want to ask me and Garrett a question on sales that you're stuck on? And you don't even have to be in his industry. OK, he understands sales, the psychology now, so it doesn't really matter what you sell. I mean, we train every industry. Watch, We train 158 different industries, including everybody's watching us right here. So I want you to post in the comment section your biggest question you have for Garrett and I. And we're going to take about the next four, take about five, six questions while we go through that. OK. Oh, David has a good question here. Is Garrett doing 100 percent telesales? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, long story short, so end of last year, I started with Zoom. And then uh, I, I joined another program where I was like, it was complete remote sales. And then I, I closed a few over the phone and I was like, I was like, wait a sec, why am I even doing Zoom? Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, most of the time people don't even have the camera on. So then I was like, okay, I don't need to do Zoom anymore. And then I just went 100% over the phone. Okay. I like that. Now here's a, here's another interesting question from somebody on Facebook. It just, because I'm on StreamYard, it just says Facebook user. So don't, don't get offended if I don't your name. I, I can't see your name here. It says, how did you manage to negotiate your employer script and start using NEPQ instead? I think that's what they're saying is like, how did you 
tell them that you weren't going to use their script. You're going to use any PQ. Yeah. So the nice thing about what we've set up is I've actually, so beyond like, you know, the company you mentioned earlier, I have access to like, you know, a dozen installation companies nationwide. So I'm completely 1099 independent. So I can do pretty much anything I want. So there's yeah. no like scripts to follow. Yeah. I create my own scripts. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, I just change it. As I, yeah, that, as I, I mean, agree. the best, the, here's, let me answer the question for everybody. Cause some people ask the best way is just to go out and start selling a ton. Cause your employer, when you outsell everybody else, do you think they're like, Hey, no, no, you're selling too much. You're making us too much money. I want you to switch back to what everybody else is doing. That doesn't really work that well. That's the best way. You don't negotiate. You just go out and sell your numbers. Cause your boss to do whatever you want to do. But if you don't have any numbers then yeah, just don't negotiate. Can I use this script? Just freaking go out and use it and close deals. And when you come back, if they're like, well, why aren't you using our script? Well, is the script the most important thing to you that you guys are giving me or like me actually selling more than anybody else? And they'll be like, we want you to sell more than anybody else. Okay. I can promise you that. All right. Here's another good question here. Um, all right. So living tap water from YouTube, what was the hardest part about transitioning to NEPQ? That's a valid question. I, I would say just like for me, like following the, the structure in the beginning, because it is a lot of inf information. Yeah. So sometimes you feel a little bit overwhelmed. So like for me, like following the system and everything was a little yeah. bit, uh, a little bit hard for me. What did, and, you do, uh, what did you do? Because here's, here's the one thing that you did is you didn't, you started like right in advanced inner circle without going through any of the portal training first. Typically now we don't even let people do that. They have to start in at least advanced 3.0 and then they can graduate into inner circle so they learn it in stages so 3.0 might double their income but then they go up two or three more levels in inner circle so once they get into inner circle they already understand it but now we're making it industry specific with them so we have kind of solved that problem from a year and a half ago um the biggest thing in transitioning that we train people is not to transition 100 percent the first day because you don't know what you're doing yet so when you go when you go into our virtual training platform now, which is like 43, 44 hours, I think when you were here, it was like 31, but we've added about yeah. like 14 or 15 of advanced content in there. You're going to start taking bits and pieces of that, like this question here and that question here. And like, oh, Jeremy, yeah, he's using those verbal pauses there. And you're going to interject that into what you're already doing. And when you get in the group training with myself and our sales trainers, you're just going to take bits and pieces the first 30 days, the first 45 days and interject. Your numbers will go up consistent because if you switch over cold turkey after three days and you don't really understand what you're doing, you're not going to have any confidence when you get in the appointments or calls. So if it goes off script, you're, oh, I don't know what to do because you don't understand the psychology. But if you're already using what you have and you start integrating pieces within 30 to 45 days, your confidence goes up because you're already closing more. Let's say you go up 30, 40 percent from what you're doing. Now you psychologically understand each stage and why you're asking those questions. And now you can implement everything and that's when you really go high. So it's like you're transitioning over like a month or two into full NAPQ, 100%. You would always do that with anything that's new. You never like cold turkey quit the next day when you don't understand it. It'd be like a brain surgeon, like having this way that works okay, then you're like, you know this way's much better and you transition to it the next day, but you only know 10%. Like you're not, you know, you got to learn it right before you transition fully. Okay. Uh, here's a, here's an interesting question. I think is valid for your industry. What Samuel J. Sneed, what is your realization rate in solar actually getting installed? Many sell, not so many installed. Well, I can tell you why a lot don't get installed when you use traditional selling skills, but Garrett, I'll let you answer that. Yeah. So, so the, so actually the biggest factor there's, it's a combination in solar, in my opinion, uh, from like the installation company you have, the market, the permitting. Uh, and the reason I say that is if you have like four to six month installs, which I was, you know, dealing with that for a while, you're going to have higher, uh, uh, you know, you, you might have higher, uh, you know, cancellations for me specifically, my cancellation rate, I like to shoot around 20% and the worst case, uh, 30, I obviously I would like it to be a lot less, um, but it really just depends on the market. You're, you're, you know, you, because you haven't been in advanced inner circle in the last year, we have yeah. so many tie down phrases for every industry, including yours, where a lot of our salespeople that sell what you do now and companies are down to around 15 to 10%. You haven't learned the tie downs yet because you're not in the program. There you go. 
There we go. I right? got to create something. Yeah, we have an <laughs> industry specific solar portal now. That's all just solar now. So there's a whole nother yeah. story. But 20% is not is really good because the average salesperson is about 50 to 60%. Yeah, it could be really bad uh, for sure, especially but uh, especially like if you have super long installs. But like if you if you have a good installer, and you have relatively quicker installs, and you do a good job, like uh, you know overall, then you're gonna have a lot less. Ex exactly, yeah. you'll have a lot less uh, a less cancellations for the, sure. The biggest reason, so to Sammy, to answer that question, the biggest reason your industry and any industry that has an installation scheduled out, why they cancel, because this was the same thing. When I first, my first sales job was in alarms, the cancellation rate was 50, 60%. And usually the average install was two or three days later is because of what you've been forced to learn in sales is you're, you're asking questions that force them to give you the answers you want. Most of the time, you might not realize that, or you're asking very surface level quest questions where they're giving you surface level answers in return. Human beings don't buy on logic, they buy on emotion. And then you push and pressure at the end with assumptive closing techniques overcome their objections. And then when you leave, because you externally persuaded them, guess what happens? That wears off. And now you're not there. It's like going to a motivational seminar. You get all hyped up and pumped up because the speakers externally persuaded you that you needed to go out and save the world and do great things, which I love that. But then you get back three, four, five days later. And where does your mind go back? back to the way you used to think because you were externally persuaded. Okay. With what we teach you in NEPQ, we are training you how to work with human behavior, with the way their brain works already. And we're training you how to get the prospect to do all the work, how to get the prospect to sell themselves, how to get the prospects to overcome their own concerns and how to get them to pull you in where they internally feel so much tension from where they are to where they now see they could be lower bill locked in rate eventually they have no bill and they've have so much internal tension not from you telling them that because that goes in one ear out the other you're biased you're the salesperson but your questioning your tone ability has caused them to internalize that and when they internalize it it's their idea to go solar it's their idea they're telling you why they see this benefiting them the most and it's very hard for them even if it's scheduled out a month or two to cancel because they've told themselves why they have to do it now and do that with you. That's why we can go into companies like solar or any companies that have things scheduled out and we can quite literally take their cancellation rate and at least minimum cut it by 50%. We do that a lot in roofing too. 50% cancellate. We got roofing companies now that cancel rates 10 or 11%. It's amazing. It's because of internal persuasion. Internal persuasion is the highest form of persuasion. Okay. Because you are getting them to persuade themselves. It's their idea. So when you leave their idea is still there, it's very hard for them to later reconvince themselves that they were wrong, but it's easy for them to convince themselves you were wrong and trying to push them into it. That's the difference. That's why you're, that's why so many people in solar and those industries have high cancellation rates because of the way you've been forced to sell. Okay. That can change once you learn those skills. Okay. I digress. I'm, we're going to go through a couple other questions here. Uh, Sam, and this is why I love NEPQ. It helps me take better care. And they tell me that perfect. It's part of it. You, you get into our advanced uh, programs where we teach you industry specific solar. We even have clients that we subcontract with that are making a hundred thousand plus uh, a month in income door to door and virtual. And they actually show you how to tie in NEPQ to solar and other industries. Okay. We do a lot of that. We have sales trainers around the world now. Okay. Now let's go back. What's a good, let's, let's, I'm going to ask you a few questions. What's cause now you're virtual. So what's maybe a good connection question that, you know, you've, you've been taught through inner circle, just one, there's several that you're going to ask for what you do, but what's a good connection question that really has helped you cause the prospect to lower their guard when they get on the phone with you? Yeah, I, I like to use this one and just a disclaimer, it really just depends on where the appointment comes from. But I, I pretty much just say, I, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what was about the ad that attracted your attention? Okay. So that kind of opens them up. Well, I attracted me because of X and Y and Z. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And a good one. So I'll give you kind of an example here for solar because we want to get them into results-based thinking quickly rather than price or cost-based thinking, right? Because a lot of people just don't know anything about solar. And that's mainly for most industries, right? You want to get them in results-based thinking from the first words out of your mouth. 
Okay. So yes. Yeah, so if you're on the phone, they booked in the appointment, you're calling them, or let's say they booked in the appointment, you're on zoom, or even if you meet them at their home, if you're selling B2C, if, or it's B2B, if you're meeting at their office, let's just stick to solar. Okay. So it looks like, so you call, Hey Gene, yeah, it's just Garrett uh, with XYZ. Looks like you had uh, booked in on the calendar about uh, looking for ways to like uh, lower your bill and, and lock in your, your rate, right? See what I'm doing right there? It looks like you'd booked on the calendar about looking at uh, possible ways to like lower your, your power bill and lock in your rate, right? Right. Because what? Why did they respond to the ad? You're not selling solar. You're selling them the results of what going solar does for them, which lowers their bill, locks in the rate, and eventually they have no bill. So right when I get them into results facing, they're like, Right. Yeah. That's why I booked the call and I've got them right into the end result of what we're doing thinking. That's a really good connection question. We would use first if it's an inbound lead type thing. If it's outbound, we would change that. If it's door to door, not really connection questions. It's more like a door approach, a little bit different. Okay. Um, what's a good maybe situation question that we've taught you to use? Because even in solar, even in situation questions, you can almost start to get them to see that maybe they have some problems they didn't realize they had. Even if it's an inbound book call, it doesn't necessarily mean that they realize that they have all these problems, right? They don't mm -hmm. understand it until your questions. So what's a good situation question that's kind of helped, you know, you that you've learned uh, from us in Inner Circle that really causes them to start to realize that, hey, maybe maybe I don't understand my real situation. Yeah, I like this one because uh, especially with when it's like monopolies, but I, I say like, how, how long have you been with that, you know, that utility company, whatever that company is? They say, oh, I've been here right when I moved in or something. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, forever. Cause you know, like you can never really uh, change it. And then it's like, what are you, what are you doing now to, you know, help mitigate, you know, mitigate that or that utility company? Yeah. Yeah. Those are good. And another couple that you'd use in your industry is like, now you're, um, now, everybody pay attention to my tone here, what I'm doing here. Everything I'm showing you here with my body language and how I'm touching my face and my tone is for a psychological reason, even if I'm talking on the phone. Because why? Because when I, with my body language, even if they can't see me, still affects my tone and how I come across, right? Because your tone yeah. is how your prospects interpret why you're asking the question, right? So now you're, um, you're uh, electric bill. Could you tell me a little bit about those? I, I know most of the year they're pretty low, but what, what has it gotten up to recently? Now, see what I do? You're electric. Now, most solar people are like, now you're electric bill. Could you tell me a little bit more about there? I know it's sky high and they're charging you guys so much now. Well, I mean, it's not that bad. See, mm -hmm. you're mismatching. So when you like start like going into like sales mode and like, making everything a big deal most of your prospects unless they're laydowns they like they 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 make it not a big deal like they they minimize it well i mean it's not that bad it's raise it right but it's not that bad but if i if i have what's the word here if i if i downplay it human beings will upplay it they'll make it a big deal okay in a sales situation okay now so pay attention to what i'm doing here you're now your electric bill could you tell me a little bit more about those. I mean, I know most of the year they're pretty low, but what has it gotten up to recently? And see, I use my hands. I know most of you are pretty low, but what has it gotten up to recently? Oh gosh, our bills are sky high. See, I'm downplaying it causes them to upplay it. In social dynamics, that is called mismatching. It's the way our brains are wired. If we feel like we're talking to a salesperson, if we upplay something because we know the salesperson is biased, we're going to downplay it. But on the flip side, you'd start to downplay stuff. Now, I'm not negative, okay? I'm not saying, oh, I know it's, you know, the bills are just really good. Like, it's, it's not that much money to pay the, the rate hikes. Like, you don't want to do that. That's that's too far. But I want to be more neutral and downplay it a little bit. And they're like, oh, my gosh. Or if let's say, like, well, I'm not really sure. What what have they what have they been making you pay even the last 6 to 12 months? And how I raised my hands. Notice, what have they been making you pay? See, nobody likes to be made or forced to do something. So my words, when I, what have they been forcing you to pay lately though? See, when I say forcing you, people don't like to be forced. So now I'm putting a wedge in between the prospect and the power company, which I'm starting to see that without, without talking bad about the power company. Cause then that sounds like you're trying to sell them something. Just a few words. I'm seeding it in their mind where they don't realize that they're bu I'm building a wedge between them and their power company, which is really good. Okay. Problem awareness, uh, questions. Oh, I have another really good situation question. You want to hear it? Yes. Now, hey, this is kind of a cheesy question, but 
I have to ask, what type of agreement do you have with Nevada Power that's allowed them just to raise your rate without them calling you and asking your permission? And you ask that circus like, I don't have an agreement. What? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because people don't realize, they don't think about it, that they're just forced to pay no matter what. And if they don't pay, then lights go off and you know, your hose, you just can't take a shower, right? So it's kind of like, and when you say a question like that, that's an obvious answer. If you say, now, this is kind of a cheesy question and it makes it not a cheesy question. Okay, that's another technique you'll learn in our virtual training courses, all right? All right, problem awareness. How do you help them see that they have some problems maybe they didn't realize they had? Go ahead. Yeah, I like to I like to ask them this question and the reason being uh, it makes them kind of think about it, but I'm like, is there anything else that you like or don't like about, whatever company that is, say Luma Energy, you know, so because they, they, they're thinking like, hey, do I like it or do I don't, I've never really kind of thought about it, you know, then, then they might hate it. They're like, yeah. oh, I hate them because they just raise rates or, you know, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. That, okay. That's a good problem awareness question. Now, other angles uh, that you probably haven't learned because you've been out of inner circle for a while, but in like our advanced yeah. uh, inner circle that for the solar people now, uh, you know, compared to other industries, one thing that we would probably have to ask is once they, once they started telling you like, oh, you know, it's because typically, like if they weren't even sure, we'd be like, now, if, 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 now, typically, if you're on the phone, you can't do this, but if you're on Zoom or in person, it's much better. And like, well, if you look here at your neighbor's uh, bill, like Bill Ayers, <laughs> he's one of our clients, you can see like his rates went up. I mean, it's not horrible, but, you know, a couple of years ago, he's paying like 13 cents a kilowatt, like every time it goes around. And now, you know, they've raised up to about 28 cents a kilowatt. So just a little bit over double the bill. What double the bill? <laughs> so they don't realize, they understand it, but you have to be in person on Zoom to be able to show that. You can't do that on phone, but that's another way you can do it if you're on virtual or the or on the door. Okay, so now once they realize that they're paying rate hikes, you then can lean in and you can say, I mean, do you? I mean, it's because they get pissed, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm paying. I mean, do you want to have to keep paying the rate hikes if you? I mean, if you didn't have to. Notice how my tone shifts into more of a concern tone because that's now they feel like I'm concerned for them. No, if I didn't have to, or I can say, so besides having to pay the rate hikes every month, because they would have just found out they had rate hikes, do you like how things are going? And see, I, I'm asking it in kind of a, like a skeptical, like concern tone, because if I said, so besides having to pay the rate hikes every month, do you like how things are going? Yeah, <laughs> it's not bad. See, my tone dictates how they think about what I'm asking. I mean, besides having to pay the rate hikes every month, do you, I mean, do you, do you like how things are going? No, but see, I'm lowering my voice, skeptical, kind of like concern for them. That's another angle you'd want to do. Okay. Let's go back to a couple of questions here that they have here that I like here. Cause we only got about five, six minutes. Um, okay. This is a good one from, I think it's Jose Leon. What's Garrett's close rate out of 10 deals? Like, so let's say you have 10 appointments. How many are you closing to make the 80 grand per month? Yeah. So, uh, so crazy thing. Uh, and I want to make a disclaimer because online lead gen is like completely different than door to door. So it depends on your source of leads. It depends if it's a cold call from a call center, if it's from an ad campaign, if it's ex exclusive age data, there's so many factors, but for me, uh, for the first uh, quarter of the year I've been averaging. So I did actually 102 sales, uh, for the first three and a half months of the year, just over the phone, hundred percent over the phone, which is like, that's crazy for me because I did 130 last year and I pretty much did my my year in just like a quarter pretty much. Yeah, a quarter. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah. I like it. Uh, okay. So, David, being a 1099 employee, how are you getting your solar leads? That's a valid question. Yeah. So, there's, there's a lot of different things you could do. So, uh, uh, one way is a ad campaign. I don't know if I can name drop companies, but there's a there's a company I like to use or I used a bunch where you, you, you know, you pay them uh, a retainer and then they do uh, the ad spend and they generate the appointments. And a lot of the times the customers book the appointments on your calendar. I love those because obviously if a customer books the appointment on your calendar, you know, they're, they're super interested to begin with. They just need to know that you're the right person to help them, you know, solve, you know, solve that, uh, that problem. Yeah. So uh, that's one way to do it. Other that ways why you're making 80 grand a month. Just the leads are so good. Like, so when you get on them, like, I'm just ready to buy Garrett. Like oh, this man. is so awesome. <laughs> so cool. Your beard's oh, so man. awesome. Let me buy Oh yeah, they can they can hear the beard through the phone. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, uh, I mean honestly, it really just depends. But like, I mean, it, I don't. It's not really about the appointment quality. Obviously, it really depends on the quality of the appointment. It, there's a skill set behind it, of course. Um, but like ad spend appointments, cold call appointments from a call center. I've had an online setter. I've had a person, you know, dialing on the phone. 
I've had a, a lot of different things. So it's a combination of things, but I have noticed a difference in the, uh, the difficulty level, you could say of the appointment, yeah. uh, based on where they came from. Yeah. Yeah. True. Your skill level. So sometimes you have to use a much, like you have to really exert your skill level on more difficult leads to close them. But if you don't have the high skill level, you're not going to close hardly any of those compared to yep. Garrett's skill level. He can actually close the difficult leads or most of them or yep. a majority of them compared to the average salesperson that's just using traditional selling skills. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see any other questions we have. Okay. So let's talk about the solution awareness questions. What's a good question you use to get them to focus on what the future is going to look like once the newfound problems are solved. There's a bunch yeah, that yeah. we use for solar, but tell us maybe just one. Yeah. So I, I like to ask this because I mean, I think it's a obvious one, but like, it's like, if you don't mind me asking, what have you done about, you know, about changing, changing this? Like, have you changed, have you tried to change your utility company? Have you tried to, you know, look around and, you know, most of the time they can't cause it's a, it's a monopoly. So they, you know, they can't like, you know, call. So, someone so before okay. we talk, were you out there looking for ways to like really, you know, lower your bill, like get a locked in rate? Like, or were you one of those that just called Nevada Power and said, hey, yeah, I give you permission. Just raise my rate to whatever the hell you want. Were you that guy that called in? See, that's just a way you can like joke with them. If they're like, a mon if you're selling in an area where there's a monopoly, that's really funny. And it gets them to realize like, what the hell? I didn't give them permission to freaking raise my rates. It like really puts a wedge between like, the power company in them, and now you're on their side. It really builds a lot of trust and credibility in, in what you sell there. Now you'll tweak it based on the market. Like if you're in a market where there's a hundred billion choices, you're not going to use that. But in markets where there's just like one company that does everything, you can use that a lot. What about a good consequence question? What's a good consequence question we've taught you to really get them to defend themselves on why they need to make a change now with you? Yeah, I pretty much say, what if you don't do anything about your situation and it gets worse. Like, you know, possibly, you know, the rates going up, maybe, you know, what, what would, what, what would happen if you don't do anything? Yeah, that's a good one. You want me to give you a better one? Of course. <laughs> I'm, I'm teaching you now. See, I'm teaching you, you got, you got, you got to stay in there, the inner circle, man. We, we keep progressing in every industry. We get better and better every week. All right. So let's say that you're selling one of the PPA loans. So after 25 years, they have no bill, right? So locked in rate. So let's say they're paying 350 bucks a month now locked in rate. So in 10 years from now, they're still paying 350 bucks a month, whereas their neighbors might be paying 600, right? So what, I mean, what happens if you, now everybody pay attention to my tone, because I'm going to start with a skeptical tone and I'm going to end with a concern tone. And then I'm going to share with you why I did what I just did. Now, what happens if you don't do anything about this? And they, I mean, they keep raising your rates every year like they have, but now you're, I mean, now you're at that point, you're 70, 75 years old, still having to pay the bill every month. But now the bill is three times what it is now. And now you're on a limited income. How would you guys pay for it? I mean, at that point, see, why would I start off with a skeptical tone and end with a concern tone? Yeah, that, that's awesome. I love it. You start off with a skeptical tone because at the end of your solution awareness questions, when you get them to see and feel what their future looks like once the problems are solved, they're on an emotional high. It's called their emotional state. And then we want to rip that away from them, that emotional state where they're feeling that euphoria, like, oh my gosh, these problems this is going to be so great. We rip that away from them with that consequence question. We start off skeptical because that keeps their emotional high where they defend themselves on why they feel like they need to change. But at the end, we ask it in a concern tone because that communicates that we're concerned for them if they don't do anything about changing that, which builds what in a human being? Massive trust for you. OK, that's just a little example of what you learn in advanced center circle. A lot more to that, because depending on how they answer would be depending on what you say or ask next. Let's take another question from somebody here. We've got a, just a few more minutes. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, what do you do when you get stuck in conversation? I don't know. That's kind of generalized. You need to ask, be more specific with that. I don't know. I, I could interpret that question 10 different ways. Okay. True North water and air. How do you deal with difficult objections, Garrett? So I guess it really depends specifically on what 
difficult objection that is. Uh, and if for whatever reason, uh, I mean, pretty much most objections, you know, I could just answer and ask the you know question back and go no right objections through it. can be prevented. So, so true North water and air on YouTube objections are not something that the prospect got up that morning and they're like, you know what, that appointment with that guy today, about <laughs> halfway in, I'm going to throw out that objection. It's not like they planned that out. Objections are only triggered based on you, the salesperson, because you, you don't know how to get the prospect to emotionally open up and they stay surface level with you. And what you're doing is you're triggering uncertainty in their brain. When you trigger uncertainty in a human being's brain, that uncertainty causes them to give you objections. You, they're not doing that on purpose. It's not like they woke up that morning and planned out the objections they were going to give you. You were triggering it based on your tonality because you don't know you don't know how to use your tone to get them to let their guard down. So they're emotionally guarded the whole time. So when you ask questions, do you ever notice they give you vague, generalized, surface level answers? Because you you've triggered sales resistance early on in that conversation from your tone and not understanding the right questions to ask. And that's why you're getting objections at the end. You can quite literally prevent 50 to 70% of the objections you get now. And if you do get an objection somewhere because you built such a big gap from where they are compared to where they want to be, because they feel that urgency and they still have a concern, it's very easy to help them overcome it because they feel such a big gap from internal tension in there. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. This is what you, see, these, these type of questions tells me that true north water and air you're losing a lot of sales that you should be making right because our clients who our clients in any industry they don't they don't have to ask those questions anymore because they don't have that issue okay because they know how to prevent most of those objections from happening okay uh jack one last question i start tomorrow with phone sales for credit card sales and mca loans what is the best introduction to disarm the prospect phone sales for credit card sales and MCA loans. You're going to have to give us more details on that. I know we train a lot of people in that industry, several companies, but I'd have to understand like what problems you're actually solving there. Oh, and merchant cash advance loans. I mean, that's a whole training in itself. Uh, Jack, just message me directly in the Facebook group, salesrevolution.pride. That's probably your, what you're asking me right there is literally like an hour training on what are the right connection questions to ask for me to sell MCA loans to business owners because the objection you're going to get is a high interest rate. Now your prospects though, can't scale their business without those funds. So you've got to know how to position it and get them to lower their guard down where at the end they view that getting that MCA loan is and having the money to scale their company and make more money is far less riskier for them than them trying to bootstrap it. Okay and try to figure it out on their own that it's far less risky, even paying a high interest rate is far less riskier for them than them not having the money to scale. So that's a whole training itself. Now you, you want to learn that because we train lots of people in your space and make 20, 30, 40 grand a month in commissions or more Then join the Facebook group salesrevolution.pro and you can message me directly because we train tons of people in your space. Cause I can tell you what's going to happen without the training. You're going to get punched in the face pretty hard. Would you agree on that Garrett? Oh yeah. I know sure. what objection you're going to get every single time, but we can try to prevent it. Okay. Gary, any last words of advice that you'd have, even maybe for somebody brand new looking to get into sales, do they need training or should they try to figure it out after they get the job or even a vet who might be, was doing well, making 10, 15, 20 grand a month, but maybe wants to get to the next level. Any last piece of advice you'd give anybody? Yeah, I would say the sooner you can start, the better, because all that time you wait thinking about it, you end up losing, you know, losing deals. And with the right training and the right skill set, you're going to be able to win those deals at a much higher rate. Uh, and secondly, for anyone that's brand new, uh, be, uh, don't, don't give up. I sales is hard, but if you're consistent and persistent and you just never, you never give up, you know, you're going to have the most success. So for me, yeah. I, I credit, it'll be, very, I credit it'll be very hard without the right skills for sure. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> when you have the right skills, when you know what questions to ask, when you know how to use your tone to get them to let their guard down, selling becomes pretty easy. But when you don't have those skills and you're triggering lots of sales resistance 
you're going to get a lot of rejection and mentally it's going to be pretty hard on you for sure. So yeah, typically salespeople come into our training program because they want to acquire those skills. So when they start at their sales job, they actually start selling from day number one. Whereas people who are like, Oh, just wait, I'll get in the company and then I'll learn how to sell. Okay. So if you don't know how to sell the first two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, six weeks, you're not making many sales. What is your employer going to do? Oh, you're going to get fired. And what are you going to do then? Try to get another sales job and get fired there because you don't know how to sell. So it's like it's like being a neurosurgeon, be like, ah, you know, I, I'm not going to go to school, not going to spend <laughs> any money on school. I'll just try to figure it out when I get my first surgery. Hope it works out. Well, you know, that's why they don't let neurosurgeons do brain surgery without the proper education. Can you imagine if salespeople had the proper education before they got in sales? How well they do? something to think about it. Now you want to start acquiring those skills like Garrett and tens of thousands of our clients in your specific industry watching me directly right now. I can assure you we are training tons of people, if not thousands or tens of thousands, in your industry watching me right now that are making two, three, five times what you are, even if you're already making six figures. Okay. So you want to acquire those skills message me directly right now. So if you're in the Facebook group, Sales Revolution, if you're in the Facebook business page or my Facebook, message me directly right now. If you're on YouTube, you can't message me on that platform. You'll have to join our Facebook group. There's a banner underneath me in purple. It says Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro. We make it easy for you. You can join that for free. There's about 82,000 people in there, many from your industry watching me who is ready to collaborate, help you. And you can even get into our advanced. Uh, so when you get in there, message me directly right now. And like I said, Either myself, I promise you, I, I won't forget about you, either me or one of my surrogates or stun doubles because I can't message 500 people at a time because we have a team of like 20 some people in the DMs, including myself here and there. Uh, we'll message you back some details. You can even book with one of our account managers. Our account manager's job because we don't have one training product with one price. We have like 27 or 28 different versions right now. So once they understand what industry you're in and Type your income level right now tells us your skill level. So whatever income you're at now, that tells us what your skill level is. And they're going to ask questions about like, what are the objections you're getting that that you're losing deals from the most? What are you saying that you feel like is triggering sales resistance? And they might even have your role play a little bit. Once they found out those details and understand your skill level and where you want to be income wise, then they'll make the suggestion of which training program is going to take you there the very quickest. Most of our training programs, you get an ROI within like a day or two after you get in. It's pretty quick with ROI. If you go through the program, would you say that, Garrett? Or did it take you years? Oh, man, I got an ROI before I joined. It felt like <laughs> from some of the nuggets I got. <laughs> there you go. All right, Garrett, thanks for being on. You're, you're a myth, man, a legend. And you're able to move to Puerto Rico. You make a million dollars a year. You move wherever you want now. Your boss gives you flexibility. See, here's the thing, everybody. You start making a ton of money for your company. Guess what? your company's a lot more flexible with you because they don't want to lose you. So if you're making 50 grand a month, 60 grand a month, you're like, you know, I really want to work from home. But they're going to be like, nope, you're fired. You're making <laughs> millions of dollars a month, but you're fired if you move. Now they're not. They're just not. You're going to have lots of flexibility. Now, if you don't have those skill level and you're not making them a lot of money and you ask them those type of questions, well, what do you think they're going to say? Hell no. You know, you have no flake. You don't, you don't have the skill level to ask that. So you acquire the skill level like Gary. You can do whatever the hell you want. Garrett, great job, man. Congratulations on your results. And the good thing is you're still learning. You're still acquiring skills to get to a higher level than you are. And I and I think I want to say, I think I'm I'm going to join uh, the new uh, the new inner circle to uh, get that new uh, solar nuggets. <laughs> I, think, I think you'll like the new solar portal plus the industry specific with, that we do with all those different industries. Yeah, we're always improving the, the platform. Like every three months, six months, you'll notice more advanced skills in there, more advanced training. All right, Garrett. Talk to you soon. Everybody else, we'll see you next week. Message me directly right now. You want to start acquiring those skills. Thanks, everybody. Yep. See you later.